A dad asked, what did you learn in school today? His son said, dragons. Pardon me, your class learned about dragons? Yup, said the boy. I learned about dragons. I don't know what everybody else learned. <laughs> well, I've been learning about a real animal that seems as implausible as any dragon. Almost 300 years ago, French naturalist Georges Buffon described it. Slowness, habitual pain, and stupidity are the results of this strange and bungled creature. They are the lowest form of existence. One more defect would have made their lives impossible. That's the quote. Early scientists even named it after one of the seven deadly sins. Can you guess? It's rather slow. It's rather slow. It is the sloth. By the way, you kids watching, did you know that the sloth loves winter? Yup. They throw slow balls and make slow man. Ah! Oh man, puns. These docile creatures live where it's warm, spending most of their lives asleep in rainforest treetops. If a sloth really wants to ramp things up, he will crawl about 120 feet in a day. That's about the same speed as a teenage boy cleaning his room. Some spend their entire lives in the same tree where they were born. I'm, I'm talking about the sloth, not the teenagers. To reach higher speeds, once a week, on average, the sloth will misjudge the thickness of a branch and plummet hundreds of feet, bouncing several times, then lay there stunned. Ever so slowly, it then climbs the tree to rest up and do it again. It's true. In the wonders of God's creation, we see God's majesty, his character, and even his sense of humor. If you doubt me, study the platypus and his beaverish tail and duck-shaped bill, or the star-nosed mole with its hilarious face and organs distributed on 22 appendages. Say what? It's true. But did you ever wonder how the awkward sloth did not reach extinction? Three reasons. First, their slowness isn't a defect, it's an asset essential to their survival. Rainforest predators have eyes tuned to pick up movement. Sloth movement mimics the swaying of branches. They're almost impossible to detect. Secondly, the sloth is extremely strong. <coughs> Sloths hang comfortably from a tree branch for long periods of time. Try this and you'll have a new appreciation for this creature. It's true that sloths are rarely hired as lifeguards or paramedics, but they are perfectly suited to their treetop home. Thirdly, sluggishness helps the sloth conserve energy. An adult sloth can survive on just three leaves a day. It's true, the three-toed sloth has the slowest metabolism of any mammal, period. This tree-dwelling marvel is not just a survivor, it's a thriver precisely because it is slow. And where am I going with this? I have no idea. Am I encouraging you to be a permanent couch potato? No. The Bible does not say, go to the sloth thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. But in reading about the sloth, several things came slowly to mind. First, I need to slow down a little in such a speeded up world. Second, I must admit that I am slow to grace and far too quick to judge others. <laughs> like that French naturalist who called the sloth the lowest form of existence, I forget that we're all made in God's image with different backgrounds, gifts, talents, and speeds. When he created the sloth, he rejoiced and said it was good. And I think he smiled. 1 Corinthians 1 says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes, or powerful, or wealthy, when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Do you feel weak? 
a little slow today. God made you and loves you just as you are. So be who you is, because if you ain't who you is, you is who you ain't. And boast in him alone. Which reminds me of the acceptance speech a sloth once gave when he won an award. He said, It's about time. Ow! Mmm! Mmm! He likes it! That worked? <laughs>